name's Jen Clark. I'm the City of Richmond's Public Education and Outreach Coordinator for the RVAH2O Clean Water Initiative. We're here at the wastewater treatment plant today, which is where all water from your home comes, unless you're on a septic system. That includes water from your shower, your dishwasher, your laundry, anything you flush down the toilet comes here, water from the sink, all ends up at the wastewater treatment plant. Wastewater treatment plant matters because without it, we would not be cleaning water from our homes at all. It would go straight to the James River, or straight to your local water body, and there would be no treatment of bacteria, solids, all items would end up here. So you'll see today we filter out a lot, um, and it's important to understand why in an effort to bring clean water to Richmond itself and all communities downstream in the Chesapeake Bay and across the world. Good afternoon, Henrico County students. Today, we are here at the City of Richmond Wastewater Treatment Facility. Today, you get an inside peek at the process of cleaning water. Hi, my name is Jarvis Coombs. I am the supervisor senior here at the Richmond Wastewater Treatment Plant. I'm going to describe the process Beginning with the influent junction box, we have a north and south gate that allows the flow to come into the plant. Right now, we're coming in to bar screen number two, and the flow is being cleaned of rags and debris by this huge structure here that's called a climbing screen. The flow comes through either or of those gates and flows over to the bar screen area. At the current time, we have number two in service and number one is out being worked on. After the water has come through the bar screens, it travels through either of these three gates and it comes over to the grit channel. This is a physical process that slows the water down to a half a foot per second so that heavy grit will fall out and stay out of the flow. It exits through the four gates at the back. It's lifted up by pumps in this building and discharged up the hill where it remains to flow by gravity. Preliminary. In this preliminary treatment stage, wastewater flows to the headworks by gravity. Grit, rags, so-called flushable wipes, and heavy debris are removed and taken to a landfill offsite. Water is pumped from the lift station to the primary clarifiers. This is the primary. At this stage, we remove sludge. Again, we slow the water down to a standstill so that anything that will float rises to the top and anything that will sink will fall to the bottom. The bottom flights that you see here scrape up the sludge and dump it at the end of the trough. The flights on the top collect floatables, plastic, chewing gum, anything that will float and rakes it back to the trough this way. Primary. Light material, such as plastics and grease, float to the top of these separation tanks. These floatables are skimmed, dewatered, and landfilled. Heavy material sinks. Phosphorus is treated. Both are then pumped to the solids treatment process. We're here now at the secondary process. We just left the primary process. The primary process was removing rags and trash from the water. The water here is much cleaner. This is the biological process. This process is where we're trying to foster a good environment for the bacteria. We want to monitor the pH, the temperature, and most importantly, we want to keep a dissolved oxygen content. Make the bacteria happy so that they have plenty of food and something to breathe. The secondary treatment is the heart of the wastewater plant because this is where the bacteria is given food and this is where they take up oxygen. Those two requirements are 
needed in order for the bacteria to consume the carbon and organics that are in the wastewater. Secondary, organics and nitrogen are removed by biological activity. To maintain favorable conditions for treatment, dissolved oxygen concentration and other parameters are monitored and controlled. This is the final step in the process, re-aeration of the effluent. Our permit dictates that we have to have six milligrams per liter of oxygen leaving the plant. At this junction, we use air headers to put oxygen in the water. We have cleaned the water to and beyond the permit process. This part of the system is our bypass system. We are a combined sewer system, as we said earlier. In doing so, in this event, we may get too much water. We can process up to 140 million gallons a day by having the pest system operation. We will bypass the secondary treatment system into this tank. We will flow it up to the UV system, dose it with ultraviolet light, and then it will be allowed to leave the plant through the traditional outfall 001. This is the next process step. This is our denitrification process where we have 18 deep bed filters where the process of denitrification takes place. We nitrify in the secondary, we denitrify at the filters. The bacteria has consumed most of the organics and carbonation, so therefore we have to inject or infuse methanol. This process is known as the enhanced nutrient removal. Here we're trying to remove nitrogen from the process. Tertiary. Nitrogen removal, solids filtration, and disinfection occur in this final treatment stage. Nitrogen gas is released, small solids are filtered from the water, and disease-causing organisms are neutralized before treated water is released to the James River. The city of Richmond uses disinfection of ultraviolet light to kill pathogens. Um, in this step, we allow the effluent of the filtered water to flow through this system, a model of it, and the Trojan 4000 is designed to emit intense light that would keep the bacteria from reproducing. This is a scale model that shows the bank of lights up out of the water. We have two sides. You have the A side and the B side. The B side is in the water simulating disinfection. Over here, the A side would be in the water simulating disinfection. We have three such units that are called reactors. Each side has what's called a bank. This is a bank on the B side. And the one that is down here is the bank on the B side. Treating wastewater creates two streams. You have a liquid side and a solid side. This is the end of the road for the solids treatment at the Richmond Wastewater Treatment Plant. We will have a contractor come in, scoop this up, load it, and haul it to the fields where farmers use it as an adenement to their soil process. Biodegradable solids are thickened, digested, and dewatered in the solids treatment train. These biosolids are stabilized and treated for land application to agricultural lands used for livestock feed and production. My name is Justin Doyle and I'm the James River Association's Community Conservation Manager. So what are the solutions to mitigating 
and reducing the frequency of combined sewer overflows. While the wastewater treatment plant plays a significant role in that. And in the near future, we're gonna see increased capacity to treat wastewater and stormwater during wet weather before it returns to the James River. Earlier this year, Senate Bill 1064 was passed by the General Assembly, which puts the city of Richmond on a timeline to address its combined sewer system in 15 years. And the James River Association is very excited about the timeline and looks forward to working with the city of Richmond to achieve its goals.